Well, that whole thing of, you know, coming in through the, the, the back door, um, it, it kind of segues really well into what I consider one of the, the greatest adventure and discovery stories of all time, the 1997 film Contact. Ah. Um, if I recall, it took Carl Sagan over a decade to finally get the movie made. And sadly, he passed before its release. Um, yep. How did you first become involved with the script and what did you know of Carl's work? to get this film made by that point. Yeah, this was a tough one. Um, I was being, I know I'm obviously, I, I was a huge Carl Sagan fan. It, it had to do with some of my sci-fi bit, but also his whole thing about the universe and, uh, and, and it being so big that how can we just be us, you know? Um, I was finishing Hook and Dracula. Or we, I think we we're finishing production on, on Hook. Uh, and I was approached to, to adapt the novel, Contact. Uh, and I said, no, uh-uh. No, not, not, no. Um, it's Carl Sagan. I don't think that book is adaptable. I don't think it should be adapted. You know, it's, uh, plus it, it, the book was full of religion and science uh, kind of diatribe, you yeah. know, back, and I said, you'll, you'll never get that to play certain places. And I just kept saying no. And they kept coming back to me and saying, come on, my agent, you read the, you know, you got it. This is, they're making, they'll pay you they'll, all this new stuff, you know, and it's Carl Sagan. I said, I know it's Carl Sagan, who I would love to hang out with, but I'm not going to do this book. And finally, I, I said, okay, all right. There, there were seven writers on this project before me and mm -hmm. three directors. So I said, all right, let me see what's wrong. Why they can't, you got all these big name writers, all these Academy Award nominees and what it, what what their problem is, why they can't get a script they want to shoot. I read a couple. And these were by name, people that are writers that I respected. They had nothing to do with the book. They were just as afraid of it as I was. Uh, and I mean, except they had, I think one one writer had, a, had a, her son stole away on the ship to go to, the only thing they had was to tr travel to the center of the galaxy. So then I found out, I said, how they, how are these so far away from the book? Did anybody talk to Carl? I found out that nobody talked to Carl Sagan. Not one writer, not one director talked to Carl Sagan. I said, how is that possible? Well, you know, he's an author. He's this big scientist. He's not a screenwriter. He's not a... So I finally figured out, I said, okay, now I have a way to get out of this deal. I said, okay, first of all, Carl Sagan has to approve me as the writer. Carl Sagan and Annie Drian, his wife, who wrote the book, had to be a part of the development process. And you have to pay me all this money and fly my family back to New York and we have to go spend time with them, you know. And I figured that would be a no. Well, they said yes. And I found out that Carl was actually delighted that a writer wanted <laughs> to come and talk to him about the book. So we had a weekend, Linda Opes, the producer, uh, who uh, arranged this weekend up in Cornell, upstate New York, with our families. We were going to have a family retreat. Jake and Julia, uh, uh, Sasha and Sam, uh, Carl and Ann, my wife Judy and I, and, and, and Linda. We had a great time. And I just interviewed Carl like a journalist. Why did you write the book? What did you want? What do you want people to take away from this? Why is it important to you? What parts of, you know? And I would write down his answers. Yeah. And so I we examined the book as if he were being interviewed about why he wrote it. And it turned out that all the a, a lot of the keys to that were there. And he he just wanted kids to be excited about science. He also wanted us to wake up to the fact that that we weren't alone in the universe. And if we'd stop trying to kill each other and blow the planet up and join that galaxy that maybe solve a lot of our problems here. Um, and he would look at my notes every day and grade me. But in that weekend, as Linda likes to say, we found the movie inside the book. You know, uh, and the big part, the big one was the book that when, when she meets her father in the center of the galaxy, it was not really her father, but it's the scene everybody's yeah. been waiting for. I just said to Carl, listen, there's no build up to this. There's no real relationship with her father in the book. It's not even her real father in the book. We have to build that relationship so that there's a great sense of loss and, and promise and anticipation. That's the, that's the scene the audience is waiting for. And he was very gracious that way. We built that whole relationship with her father.
um, so that his death meant something. And that was Michael Goldenberg who who really came in and and nailed the the, the death of the father. Um, and uh, we spent two and a half years together. I was the greatest time I've had, you know, um, uh, with working with an author. Uh, we had two and a half years together with him and Anne and our families. Uh, and it was phenomenal. It was horrible to lose him yeah. just when we were finishing the film. Okay. Um, I didn't stay on the project. I was replaced. Hmm. I was, was kind of bitter. Uh, and But when I saw the final shooting script, I realized that's what Carl, that's kind of what Carl and I had, we had, that's the movie that we had found inside uh, the book. So I g ended up getting uh, a nice credit, a uh, very nice credit on the film, but it was sad that he didn't make it to the end. Yeah. Um, I, I've got a couple of lines here from the film, and I don't know if they were from your tenure with the film or if they came after but I, I'd like to know a little bit more about them. First is Ellie's line in the, to, in the in the capsule, they should have sent a poet. Was that something straight out of the book or was that your line or was that something that the person who came after you put in? No, it's not in the book, but but we talked about uh, the, the the poetry of, of the journey. I wrote a, I wrote a version of that, but I th that had to be either um, who didn't get credit. Um, uh, oh, come on, Jim. Not my whole golden bird. Um, uh, Minnow Maze. I think that's his line. Um, that the the, 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 fat, he, he, the line that fashioned out of what I wrote and what Michael Goldenberg wrote. Um, but it was not in the book. Got it. And it's um, a brilliant, it's a brilliant, brilliant oh, statement. Yeah, incredible. I mean, it, it brings tears to your eyes. Yeah. Um, uh, next is Ellie's line to Palmer uh, about Mrs. Kane. Um, I mean, that got her kicked out of Sunday school. Uh, I mean, that, that line is such a deep cut biblical reference. You, you have to be pretty familiar with the Bible, or at least the Scopes Monkey Trial, to know what she was referencing there. Was that line from you or Carl or the person or somebody who came after you? I think that's that probably I think that's probably Carl. OK, uh, the but I do remember the line that whole that whole discussion they have at that at that party got changed a bunch and it's the and it was a favorite scene of Carl and Ann and I's that that Zemeckis didn't shoot um where Josh tests her faith with a full cult prism where you he it was a prism where you you it's so the balls on the chain mm -hmm. and the principle is you raise the ball up this high it will not swing higher on the other on the other arc it'll it'll only go the same level that gravity mm -hmm. will stop it and he tests her uh and um she swears she won't flinch it's because she knows the laws of the, the physics and she flinches. So he, he would say, you didn't have faith in your own, in your own laws, but the, the cane, the cane line, I may be in the book because the book was full of biblical references. I'd have to go back and look at that. Um, the last line that sticks out to me is the one Ellie's father says to kind of bookend his appearances in the film, small moves. Um, was that line taken from the book or was that your creation? Well, I thought you were going to come up. You were going to ask me about the line about it, if it's just us, it seemed like an awful waste of space. Yes. And well, that, that's another that, great. That's the line that everybody asked me about. Um, small moves. I think we had, that's a version of what was in the book, but I'm not sure because it was uh, all about baby steps, you know, or I yeah. think originally it was baby steps. Small moves. I don't. I don't know where that came from. But I remember baby steps, but I'm sure that that came either from Minnow or from, or from Carl or from uh, from Michael. The line that I thought you'd hit me with is the line that is repeated three times in the movie. It was just us. It's an awful waste of space. Everybody attributes that to Carl. That was me. It's not in the book. I found it in Thomas Mann's Tom Thomas Mann's book um uh on uh coming uh, coming of age in the milky way tim ferris's book uh and t man said this long quote from the 16th century you know if god went to all the trouble to create the uh, the heavens and the skies and the earth you know it seemed like vapid and what a not terrible you know and i just shortened it to that line um carl gets credit for it it's fine with me but that was the line that he said that's the he didn't like it at first then he said that's the theme. That's the best scientific argument stated in the simplest, in the simplest possible manner. It, that, that we had there's life, it has to be life out there. <laughs>